Hello, we're so back in the room. Okay, you're back. <laughs> back. The next question, uh, which movie scarred you as a child? Right, so I was a very cowardly and afraid child. You know, the world is scary when you're a kid. You know, there's so many different things that, that will go and freak you out. And I I don't want to give away Joe's entry because Joe's going to be talking about Batman Returns later. I had a very bad event with Batman Returns when I was younger where I loved Batman and Robin. And then we went to the local video store and Dave, it was Dave's video rentals in Liverpool. It was like, hey, David, my dad was called David. He's like, you showing your boy? Shouldn't your boy Batman Returns? And I was like, it, I was like, oh, it's like, well, watch it. And then I watched Batman Returns, and it scared me. But that's not what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> what I'm here to talk about right now is a little old movie that recently turned 30. No, it didn't. It turned 25. Or I can't remember. It's old. It recently had an anniversary. It's Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which is one of the greatest movies ever made. However, one thing about Who Framed Roger Rabbit is that it also has the unfortunate uh, thing of being the first movie that ever gave me a nightmare, uh, and that is uh, Christopher Lloyd's Judge Doom. I, when I saw that movie for the first time, I was like, oh, he's pretty freaky in human form. He's pretty freaky in human form, they could all agree. It's the bit at the end when he turns into spring Heel Jack, like some kind of Victorian nightmare, and starts, you know, just a big scream, remember when I killed your brother? It's not just like this! Like, that is awful! And then, he starts springing around, chasing poor Bob Hoskins down, and I genuinely had a nightmare. I had many nightmares. The nightmares never really ended, come to think about it, <laughs> of, of just Christopher Lloyd's Judge Doom chasing me in my sleep on his spring heels. And that, you know, I've seen a lot of, a lot of dark movies since then. That is still one of the most creepiest images I've ever seen. And even though I love the movie dearly, also Robert Zemeckis, why would you do that to such a pre sweet, innocent boy such as me? Because that, oh, yeah, scary. What movie scarred you as a child? <laughs> well, I want to quickly shout out Bilbo Baggins turning into a freak in The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, because that single scene completely obliterated <laughs> me. But if we're talking entire movies, it's weirdly Matilda because of Miss oh. Trunchbull, who absolutely terrorized me as a child. And actually, in a kind of perverse and weird way, made me a model student because I was so <laughs> worried about encountering a Miss Trunchbull in my time at school, or indeed right now as an adult human person, that I'm just really scared of anyone in a position of authority like that because I'm scared they'll put me on detention, I'm scared they'll make me eat a big cake. And she was this terrifying presence in that flick to the point where I genuinely couldn't watch it. If it was on the TV, I couldn't sit down and, you know, give it a go, which was embarrassing for young me who was too embarrassed to say to my mother and my friends that I didn't want to watch it because I'm really, really scared of her. <laughs> and it genuinely gave me a freak, um, just terrifying phobia of white socks, which I never got <laughs> over until years after the fact, because she wears these thick white sports socks in that movie, and she kind of pulls them over her um, trousers. And no joke, every time, again, my parents would buy me socks for Christmas, if they were white and they were thick and they had a sports logo on it, I was like looking at them like, oh my god, getting these flashbacks of this movie and this character. Genuinely traumatic, genuinely very bad. What scarred you as a child when it comes to movies? <sighs> What scarred me as a child? Well, a um, bit of backstory to this. Um, I really like Batman. Woo! Who in this room likes Batman? Yeah, yeah, everyone loves yeah. Batman, right? He's a great character. Now, when I was a, a young child, I used to uh, watch the the Batman TV series. You know, my original Batman was 1960s Adam West. Batman, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, so, so sometime, I don't know, one evening, I was probably about seven or eight years old. Uh, I came downstairs and uh, my mum was watching the telly. I said, I said, oh, what are you watching? She was like, oh, I'm watching Batman. I'm watching, it's uh, Batman Returns. And I was like, oh, back. I, oh, Batman's back. I was like, oh, Batman, oh, great. <laughs> Batman, you know. Um, so I sat down and watched this film. And, um, if I remember the order of, of what I experienced, the first thing that I saw upon sitting down is Batman walking through an alley and this big goon comes at him. So Batman punches him and he, uh, he doesn't even recoil at all. So Batman then straps a piece of dynamite to the guy's chest and like kicks him down a hole with a grin on his face. And so the guy just falls down a hole and explodes and he's dead. You know, I was like, whoa, okay, that was a bit, bit dark, you know. Um, and then, you know, I was thinking, oh, I don't think I want to watch this. And mum was like, no, it's okay, it's okay, you know. So then, 
the next scene, it feels like it was the very next scene anyway, uh, we get Michelle Pfeiffer up in Christopher Walken's office, uh, discovering some uh, documents and, and all of this stuff, and then Christopher Walken comes in, he catches her, and he pushes her out of the window, you know, his plate glass window, she falls to the ground screaming, dozens and dozens of stories, crashes into the ground to her death, and then, like, loads of cats start, like, nibbling on her in a really bizarre it's dead body, this one with all these cats nibbling at her. Sometime later, this is the thing, this is this story, this is a story of two acts. Um, sometime later, I, once again, I came downstairs from like, my bedroom or something, and my mum was watching TV, <laughs> and I said, Oh, what are you watching? She was like, I'm watching Batman Forever. And I was like, oh no, Batman, I'm not watching Batman. And she was like, no, 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 it's all right, because Batman Forever's funny. This is like funny Batman again. I was like, right, okay then, okay, I'll sit down. And you know, Batman Forever is a, a much more camp, colorful, fun film. The mise-en-scene is incredible. Um, but I sat down, and you know what the, the first thing that I saw was? It was the bit where Harvey Dent gets acid thrown in his face and like puts the sheet of paper up his face and just loads of blood is like leaking through it and he's just bleeding all over the place and screaming because his face is burning off. This was a so funny Batman. It's a man getting his face burned off with acid. I was like, no, I'm out. I'm out. What movie or which movie scarred you as a child? So I've altered your question slightly <gasps> <laughs> because I was racking my brain trying to think of what film scarred me as a child and I think quite honestly if a film scarred me that much it either raised it from my mind so I was like I, what film scarred me as a child I don't know but what I can tell you scarred me as a child is something on TV which was the Doctor Who episode The Empty Child and the Doctor Dances. Gas mask zombies, children in gas masks attacking people, just walking, they don't even run, it's just, are you my mummy? And they just walk after you, oh, traumatising! Doctor Who was for children! You know, a couple of weeks before you had these fat green farty monsters that were really funny, and you're like, this is cool, when you're like 10 years old, this is funny, I like this, and then all of a sudden, wham! Let's traumatise these children for everything we've got. And I think the worst part, is when the Dr. Constantine's face like forms, it morphs into a gas mask. I mean, maybe now the CGI is slightly questionable, but even so, if I watch that scene again, I, I will not be sleeping. I can't look at gas masks the same anymore, even in a film where gas masks are, you know, it's a war film, they have to wear gas masks. I'm like, nope, don't want to look at them. They're scary. All because of Doctor Who. So that is uh, traumatizing. It's not a film, sorry. Which movie scarred you as a child? This is a weird one. So, I've got a vivid memory when I was a kid of, you know, Saturday morning cartoons were a thing, you know what I mean? They're, they're an institution in our household and they were just always on. And one Saturday, for whatever reason, I was just left in front of this television. Like, it was a full house at one point, but I think either just people went out, people went upstairs. I was in this room on my own. And a film was either it just come on, or it was part way through and I didn't notice, I was probably playing with toys or whatever. I turned to the screen, and Labyrinth was on. I didn't know what Labyrinth was at the time. And there were some puppets dancing and screaming and going, I just, I don't know what, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you even what is happening Holy. in that film. I must have been about six, six or seven. And it's just scorched into my brain. I've never watched Labyrinth because of this because it scared me so much. I went upstairs crying. I was like, there's evil puppets on the screen! I couldn't watch the Muppets afterwards. I still can't watch the Muppets. No. Anytime I see, I'm all right with Kermit, I can deal with him, but like everyone else, like the, the animal, bah, 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 freaks me out, bad, okay? I will never watch Labyrinth. It might not even have been Labyrinth that I was watching on this screen. <laughs> I've just gone. Labyrinth was the movie. I will never watch you again. David Bowie's in it. I love Bowie, but I can't watch it because it freaks me out. So yeah, that's that film is responsible for my lifelong fear of puppets in film and TV. Like, kind of, the, the, do you know what I mean? Like the puppets that are like a bit funky, kind of, not like animatronics, but like just, you can tell someone's got the hand up the, them.